Hey, it's Debbie Potts and I am doing another short video on what is the deal with the BBB and E plus small fish challenge. Dr. Ken Berry, who is an amazing person, been with them on the low carb cruise a few times. He had interesting video. Let's see. I pulled it up here on the screen, the BBB and E challenge back in 2019. And if you look at my video of the video, you can look at the BBB E and challenge the weight loss hack, extreme weight loss hack. How many views this had? How many followers? He almost has 3 million followers. So Dr. Ken Berry is making a huge impact in our world to help people simplify how to get healthy and reduce metabolic chaos. Now, it's a great diet hack. It's eating beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. Plus he just said a recent interview, I heard him on that he would add essential fatty acid fish as sardines, which uh, is another challenge right now, <laughs> three day th sardine challenge. So what is the why? Who needs to do this? When should you do it? How long? So I found some other videos. Dr. Ken Berry inspired many other people to do videos. Carnivore Quest guys did top 10 meals for carnivore, which liver bleh, don't like myself, but you can check out this information all over YouTube, which I've never really been watching a lot of YouTube, but lately Dr. Ken Berry, after being with him on the low carb cruise, I started catching up with his videos. So obviously you can see what I've been looking at. Lots of information on the proper human diet. And my friend Annette Bosworth, Dr. Boz is on there all the time. And Dr. Mindy Pels and Dr. Kilt. So let's go into what are the nutrient density foods? So liver, liver is referred to nature's multivitamin, according to my chat. GP, what is this called? Chat GPX, whatever it's called. So I looked it up. Nutrient dense foods, liver, multivitamin, rich in essential nutrients, excellent source of vitamin A, B12, folate, iron, and copper. Liver contains a significant amounts of B vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, zinc, and selenium. Butter. Who would think butter? Yesterday I had sliced steak and I put butter on it just as if I was putting butter on bread. It was amazing. Add some sea salt. It was good. You feel so wrong. And a lot of people that don't listen to our podcasts and watch these videos would be just flabbergasted that, oh my gosh, you would eat beef. You would eat butter as much as you need to feel full and satiated. Well, yes, it works. Now for athletes, you can look at when should you do this? When should you add in a strict food elimination diet? What are the signs and symptoms that would say, hey, you should actually switch your nutrition up? And that's what I do with clients when I do my intake form. I look at, okay, what are you eating? When are you eating? How's your exercise performance? How's your fat loss, health, thyroid, blood markers, inflammation? And then look at your nutritional therapy intake form. So a lot of times we could benefit from having liver, having butter. So butter, going back to my side note there, butter is a source of fat soluble vitamins as vitamin A, vitamin E, K2, and D if it comes from grass-fed cows. It's conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, a beneficial fatty acid, good source for easily absorbable dietary fat. So grass-fed butter, Kerrygold, there's um, Vital Farms, and there's some different ones. You can, if you have trouble with dairy, some people need ghee. I don't like the taste of ghee, but ghee is beneficial too if you have issues. But butter, yum. Beef. Why is there beef? A limited amount of beef. Where are we not supposed to have beef? Isn't red meat bad for us? Isn't there too much saturated fat in the beef? Well, actually, it's beneficial for you. And this is, I just started eating red meat 2019. I've been anti red meat since I was 12 years old. I had beef in private without people that knew me that would not because people would know me freak out if I eat this in front of them but I transitioned from eating just chicken and turkey and some fish to eating red meat 
2019 and I felt amazing. I knew I was low in iron and look at what's in beef. Beef is a rich source of high quality protein, essential amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, notable amounts of B12, B3, B6, and B2, and minerals as iron, zinc, selenium, phosphorus. Grass-fed beef is higher for levels of omega-3 fatty acids and CLA compared to grain-fed beef. So I had beef and I felt really good afterwards. And it did take a year for me to not throw up <laughs> TMI after I ate heavier pieces of meats as like roast beef. I remember at Christmas I tried and I was sick. And so it took me a long time to be able to digest it, but smaller cuts or even ground beef was easier for me to digest. So once I got through that, it was amazing because it had all the nutrients I was low in. And then eggs, aren't eggs an issue for a lot of people? Well, eggs, if you can tolerate them, are highly nutritious and provide essential nutrients, excellent source of protein and all the essential amino acids. So an egg diet, all the essential amino acids from the egg yolk. Now, a lot of people, we were taught again, wrong, not to have the egg yolk and just eat the egg white, which egg white doesn't have the nutrition. It's just a protein. So save the egg yolk and skip the egg white if you need to, but eggs have the B2, B5, B12, and choline. We all need choline, rich in selenium, phosphorus, and iron, and the yolk of the egg, nutrient dense, fat soluble vitamins is A, D, E, and vitamin K2. So that's why eggs are so popular. Now they're more expensive right now. So you can get your own chickens and get your own eggs from your backyard, but you know, going to the farmer's market or here we can go where we go bike riding out to Ramona and get some eggs off the farm, but try to see if eggs work for you. So including these in your diet, blah, blah, blah. Now let's look at going back to why people are doing carnivore as a cure. The foods that we hear of plant toxins and different things, we'll talk about lectins, phytates, oxalates, FODMAPs, these anti-nutrients. So let's touch on that. So here's what I looked up on our uh, nice little chat GPX, GP lectins. They're a high, they're a protein in plant foods, legumes as beans, lentil, peas, grains, and certain vegetables, a natural defense mechanism in plants. Certain lectins may have negative effect on human health, interfering with absorption of nu in nutrients or triggering inflammation and susceptible individuals. So phytates, phytic acid, are naturally occurring compounds found in plant foods, such as grains, legumes, and nuts. Phytates combine to certain minerals as zinc, iron, and calcium, forming complexes that are not easily absorbed by the body. This can potentially reduce bioavailability of these minerals. So key part here, Proper preparation of these foods, soaking and fermenting or cooking foods containing phytates can help reduce levels and enhance mineral absorption. So if you choose to have these foods once in a while, if you don't have any symptoms, health issues, just make sure you soak, ferment, and properly prepare them. All right, what are oxalates? We hear about oxalates all the time. Oxalates are compounds found in various plant foods, such as spinach, beet greens, rhubarb, certain nuts. When consumed, oxalates combine with calcium and form crystals, leading to formation of kidney stones in susceptible individuals. So oxalate-rich foods, some people don't have issues. So if you have a history of kidney stones, other conditions might be important to limit. Now, this is where we can look at genetics. We can look at nutritional therapy analysis that we do in my intake forms, and we can look at functional lab testing as organic acids test to find out if you have issue with oxalates. FODMAPs, FODMAPs stand for fermentable oligo, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and poly, polyols. So this is a group of carbohydrates and sugar alcohols found in FODMAPs or FODMAPs that found in certain foods. What happens? This can be poorly absorbed in the small intestine and they can be fermented by gut bacteria in the large intestine, leading to symptoms as bloating, gas, abdominal pain, and diarrhea in individuals with irritable bowel syndrome and other digestive sensitivities. Some common high FODMAPs in certain 
fruits and vegetables as are onions and garlic, wheat, dairy products, and artificial sweeteners. A low FODMAP diet, highly recommended, and elimination diet to identify managed triggers for IBS and digestive disorders. So then I looked up, okay, what are anti-nutrients? So anti-nutrients, as we just discussed, are naturally occurring compounds in certain foods that can interfere with absorption or utilization of nutrients in the body. While many of these compounds have potential health benefits, they can cause challenges in terms of nutrient availability, the common types of anti-nutrients, phytic acid. So again, plant foods, grains, legumes, and nuts. They bind to zinc, iron, and calcium. Oxalates, as we went over, spinach, beet greens, rhubarb, can form crystals with calcium in the body, leading kidney stones. Interfere with calcium absorption. Tannins, we did not discuss, but tannins are a group of compounds found in foods as tea, coffee, wine, and some fruits can inhibit absorption of iron and other minerals, forming insoluble complexes with them. Protease inhibitors are compounds found in legumes, such as soybeans, can interfere with the digestion absorption of proteins, inhibiting the activity of enzymes involved in protein breakdown. And then lectins, as we discussed, are proteins in certain plant foods. Lectins can interfere with absorption of nutrients by binding to the lining of the gut or by interfering the function of digest enzymes. So that's for my chat GP. So now if we look at Dr. or at Judy, healing with Judy, the carnivore cure, that why carnivore is ideal for optimal healing, we went over. These are the slides that she gave us, Nutrition with Judy. The people's carnivore cure can work with what's going on with your gut. So looking at these slides, you can get leaky gut syndrome. Okay, so actually read this when you have a chance. Unhappy gut, unhappy brain. Meat-based nutrition supports gut health and building blocks support proper neurotransmitter production. Reduced dopamine production can cause mood swings, depression, and low libido. Reduced GABA production from dysbiosis can lead to anxiety, feelings of fear. Reduced serotonin synthesis can lead to depression and low moods. Inadequate melatonin production from serotonin imbalances can cause insomnia. Impaired absorption of important nutrients for brain health. Gut inflammation can lead to brain inflammation. Challenges in cytokine and peptide secretions can lead to dysregulation in brain. And hunger signaling can and cravings can be affected by imbalanced gut. So, so important to work on healing your gut, sealing the gut wall lining. So we call heal and seal by doing a food elimination diet. And that's where it comes to be more of a carnivore based diet, animal based diet. Because if you go back to what I just went over on what are anti-nutrients, phytates, lectins, oxalates, you know, looking at all these foods that causes inflammation in some people. So if we go into, whoops, sorry. If you go back to Judy's slides, leaky gut syndrome, what can cause that intestinal damage? Triggers causing intestinal damage, dietary proteins, low HCL, low stomach acid, low digest enzymes, medications, infections, blood sugar issues, antibiotics, pregnancy, menopause, or as Dr. Elizabeth Bright, we just recorded an interview with her and we don't really have menopause as you're fertile or not fertile. You have your period or you don't have your period at different times of life, toxins, food allergies, and stress. So knowing the gut can be leaky, certain foods become healthy for others can be a trouble for you. So not all foods that even are healthy nutrient dense foods may be reactive to you. So food, what we choose, we want to look at nutrient density, plant toxins, lectins, and gluten, as we went over, can cause gut damage and inflammation, not just avoiding gluten for some people as myself, I have to avoid anything with wheat. And then I need to be careful on gluten mimicry that there's certain foods that your body will see as gluten or wheat and as corn and dairy that I need to be careful. And if I'm eating out, take a 
wheat rescue supplement or gluten guardian pill. So looking at these plant toxins and how that can cause inflammation in your body. So you have your leaky gut, you have your little villi, the gut wall lining, and then kind of the barrier from your intestinal lining to the outside into the rest of your body and through the blood, we have this gut wall lining that can get damaged and all these triggers can irritate the gut wall lining. And then we have these gaps and spaces between the villi that things that get through that are not supposed to get through, get through the gut wall lining and enter into the rest of the body. And then she has a great slide on annual sugar consumption per person. Crazy sugar dampens the immune system. And looking at the differences of sugar consumption over the years is staggering. And that remember there's type one, type two diabetes, and then type three diabetes is Alzheimer's now. And so that's why I think it's so important for looking at people with any brain health issues to type two diabetes that can be reversible, but prevent or improve the process. If you are prone to Alzheimer's, any brain issues is to work on gut health because leaky gut, leaky brain, and then looking, getting off this blood sugar roller coaster and having more ketones to feed the brain instead of depending on glucose. So the rise and fall of blood glucose, you can see this great chart from nutrition with Judy at the carnivore cure.com that ideally we're say 60, a little low blood sugar levels, but 70 to 90 in there. And you can see this blood sugar roller coaster that Judy shares is a blood sugar spikes after high carb meal. Insulin is released to lower the blood sugar. We get that low blood sugar. We're kind of grouchy, sleepy. You might feel just off and then you eat again. And then you have that extra surge of blood sugar and the extra surge of insulin to release lower that blood sugar. So you have this up and down. So you have this energy from blood sugar, and then you have this crash body stores fat. And we have this blood sugar at glucose and insulin roller coaster. So eating that donut or cereal, or you see people having this healthy orange juice and fruit and bagel orange juice that they are on that blood sugar roller coaster. But also remember chronic stress can raise your glucose too, and might just not be what you're eating, but might be sleep or sleep stress, but high carb foods have this impact on insulin and cortisol. The body has about five liters of blood, 80 to 120 mg per deciliter of blood sugar is about four grams. So that means there is less than one teaspoon of sugar in the blood at any given time, one teaspoon. So what Judy shares on here is what effect does 200 grams of carbs per meal do on the body eventually? Insulin resistance. That leads to type two diabetes. Does that impact your brain health? So just amazing how many people have type two diabetes or have insulin resistance. They have no idea, but pre-diabetes is an insulin resistance and type two diabetes is a hundred percent reversible with nutrition, with diet, not with medication. People are taking this insulin. So it's sickening. So 88 million people, she says here, 34 million people suffer from type two diabetes, but 88 million suffer from pre-diabetes. And I think they're not detected because they're looking at blood markers, maybe A1C, but not looking at insulin. So insulin on her chart here with nutrition with Judy, just looking at carbohydrates, the protein and fat, and the impact on blood sugar levels, insulin, and your cortisol levels. So if insulin can't properly manage blood sugar levels, eventually our emergency blood sugar balance lever cortisol has come to help and the cortisol functions take a back seat. So great chart from Judy, how your cortisol, insulin, blood sugar is all related. Peak carbohydrate peaks in the blood sugar, 0.5, half hour to an hour, 90 to hundred percent converts to glucose. Protein converts as sugar two to four hours, convert 50% of it converts to glucose. Fat peaks in the blood as sugar eight to 10 hours and 10% converts to glucose. Interesting. All right, here's another great one to share. The endocrine system, the system of hormones. How do you know that the sex hormones of the thyroid are not 
something and not something else is a root cause. And Judy does root cause medicine as we do nutritional therapy and FDM practitioners. And what I was talking about with Dr. Elizabeth Bright, cholesterol hormone is part of the adrenal function. If you are overly stressed and overly consuming carbs under eating, which most of us do as athletes, overly exercising, most as athletes, your body will make cortisol over sex hormones. So just to review and see this chart bigger. So if we go to the video here, make sure you're looking at these slides, but gut health, pancreas, cortex, and pituitary thyroid, just check that out, sex organs. So we've got the adrenals here and then look at cholesterol hormone pathway, cholesterol, pregnolone, progesterone. And look at this chart, how we make androdosti, uh, testosterone and estrogen. These hormone pathways are optimal. So progesterone will make cortisol, cholesterol, where body focuses on innate intelligence of protecting us. So if we have too many stressors in the body, our hormone production is decreased and our body focuses on making more cortisol and functioning. And then going back to nutrition that Dr. Elizabeth Bright was talking about, our cholesterol is made from fat. So this is why you talk to Robert Savage of Keto Savage, looking at cholesterol and our hormones that we need to eat a higher healthy fat diet and then getting enough protein to build our muscles. So we've got this steroid hormone pathway, the chronic stress response. So sex hormones are primarily derived from cholesterol. There are many pathways cholesterol goes down to produce the various sex hormones. So check out progesterone to make cholesterol, progesterone, pregnolone, but look above that, you see fat, cholesterol is up here. So we want to look at, we've got cholesterol makes these hormones from acetyl-CoA, from fat. So we need to eat these healthy fats as the grass-fed butter and getting natural fat from animal meat that's ideally grass-fed, but having our hormones production focused on that, especially if we are stressed out and we are going through that phase in life, our hormones are getting lower and we need to boost them up and build them up. So there's another chart, steroid hormone pathway, so-called pregnolone steel is questionable these days, but what happens if there's extra burden on cortisol from blood sugar imbalances, life stressors, and not enough cortisol? So a lot of people think cortisol isn't is bad. Lower the cortisol, the better. Not true. We need the right amount of cortisol and or cortisol cholesterol. And Dr. Elizabeth Bright said here, 200, 220 on your cholesterol, not lower, not higher, just that Goldilocks effect for the right amount of cortisol cholesterol. So you can see this chart from Judy on here, cortisol what will happen, all these other hormones are lower. So if you get your hormone panel, saliva or urine, you can see this metabolites, if they are all low, your cortisol might be high and then low. So you want to check this out. And of course, Judy on her podcast is gonna have all this a little more detail, but this is what she gave from the Carnivore Cure Summit, the cholesterol needs for cholesterol cortisol hormones. So check out that fat is what we need to feed or our hormones. So your sex hormones, mineral corticoids and glucocorticoids are, or to, yeah, coids are made from fat to make cholesterol. So why we talk about hormone health and thyroid health that we need healthy fats, brain also brain health, 60% fat. Brain makes up to 2% of your weight, consumes 20, 30% of your total calories. So cholesterol is not bad. It's feeding our hormones. So half the people that have heart attacks have normal level of, of cholesterol. Heart disease is a new illness. Animal-based foods is the old food. Should we fear cholesterol if 75% show no reduction in mortality? Statin drugs, as I know so many clients are on, come with health risks. 
So Judy shared that 2020 British Medical Journal found that 75% of 35 trials reported no reduction in mortality among the participants showing in the study that took cholesterol lowering gloves. Crazy, crazy. Fear of cholesterol, more information Judy shares, nutrition advice for adults. Okay, so how fat is made? Tallow, Dr. Elizabeth Bright was just talking about this and Judy was talking about this on her podcast, How Fat's Made. Tallow's from beef fat. I use often bacon. We get bacon and save the fat, put pour it in a jar. But tallow's from the beef fat. So shelf life one to three months, making of tallow, you cook meat or the bones, bone broth, and collect the fat and cool it, keep it in a jar. So tallow, lard, and other, other animal fats are not damaged. So canola oil, people think even Whole Foods still has it in all their salad bars, which I stopped eating there, unless I get just stuff without dressing on it, but everything has canola oil. So it's collected from rapeseed oil. They clean the seed and perform flaking cook and press seeds, use chemical solvent on a press cake. And then I won't go over to that, but just look up what canola, how canola oil is made. It's pretty awful. So she has more information, crude oil, degumming. So great information. If you know that disease starts with inflammation, why are we being told to consume these unstable oils that are rancid and causing more inflammation in the body? So when we look at the impact of vegetable oils, I'd be more focused on avoiding all vegetable oils than just doing no sugar. Sugar, you can go do some sprints up some stairs, but the damage on your cells with inflammation from these vegetable oils is longer lasting. So more information on nutrition with Judy, but vitamin C, great information. I know there's some amazing info also in K and A, vitamins that to get it from animal-based food. Dr. Ken Berry just did a video on Dr. on on vitamin A for if you have any eye issues, you know, it's not the same vitamin A from carrots. So meats with vitamin C, you can look at this. See, this is my problem. I'm not going to eat salmon roe, beef, thymus, gland, beef spleen, chicken giblets. Only thing I'll eat on here is crab and Dungeness crab and scallops. The rest of it, ugh, can't do. But I get, if you can eat this carnivore diet, it's a little easier if you can eat all this stuff, but I don't, I struggle with that. So beef, liver, same thing. All right, so that's just good information to go back to looking at Nutrition with Judy and information. You can get all the slides from the recent summit that they did, healing with the carnivore cure diet, estrogens, Tons of information in here. So good to share 76 pages of slides. I'm not going to go into it. Good one to end on here. And then I'll go back to the B, B, B and E challenge, but 25 grams of protein, not considering nutrients or protein digestion assimilation. How many people eat three cups of quinoa in a meal or 6.5 tablespoons of peanut butter? How many people eat at least three ounces of steak? So quinoa to get 25 grams of protein you need three cups, peanut butter, six and a half tablespoons, black beans, edamame. Yeah. Quinoa has protein in it, but to get 25 grams, are you really going to eat three cups? No, half a cup, maybe for some people, I don't even like quinoa. So getting, not having quinoa and grains was easy for me because I don't like legumes and any of that, but that's a great chart to go with people that just don't understand that nutrient density to get your protein. So easy to have three ounces of steak. I can have 10 ounces easily. So looking at eating the rainbow plant toxins, you might change your mind. I was a salad queen and I'll eat these vegetables sometimes if I feel like it, but really cut back and focusing on more protein and fat right now. And that's what my body actually prefers, but having the cabbage, Brussels sprouts, I don't like stuff doing kale uh, broccoli, cauliflower, have sometimes, um, man-made fruits and vegetables, looking at a wild fruit, wild banana, wild carrot, you know, versus these clean, perfect looking fruits. So looking at where you get your food, kale. I know a lot of people think they're so healthy. I stopped doing kale so much, 
but dinosaur kale is high in oxalates. We went over oxalates are anti-nutrients. So we want to look at the foods that we eat. Are we needing organic foods? She goes into that and then limited nutrients. If you're getting B vitamins, looking at it in a meat based animal based diet might be more beneficial because again, you're not able to eat all the amount, but sardines, if you want to do sardine challenge, not for me, but you know, getting your B12 from there, getting K2 from pork chop, clams, salmon roe. I don't like oysters, chicken, dark meat, you know, look at all that. It's nutrient dense. I understand it, but I don't like a lot of it. It's my challenge. So I am focused on more beef and I'll do grass fed beef steak, but check that out. And you can go through all this from nutrition with Judy. Okay. So what is the uh, BBB and E challenge? If you want to do a strict food elimination diet, if you feel like you have some symptoms as gas, bloating, inflammation, skin issues, acne, hormone, thyroid, I would maybe look at just doing a, a week, you know, maybe you want to do a, a 30 day carnivore diet. This stricter form of carnivore is get rid of this ad uh, simplified, just to keep it easy. Just eat ruminant meat is the beef, bacon, eggs, get your essential fatty acids from the little small fish and get your eggs. So BBB and E. So you can check that out. This is a, from, um, an article. Whoops. That's not what I'm looking at. That's the wrong slide. We want to look at what is a BBB liver you can do, but grass fed beef. I'm easy to do that and stick. So look at the video BBB and eat challenge. If you need to struggle with, if you're struggling with weight loss, if you want to look at some research behind it, it's limited, but just it's an unequal one experiment. If you have troubles with a lot of these anti-nutrients, maybe you should do a more of a keto carnivore, real food diet, nutrient density, and having your plant foods maybe reduced and maybe eliminate all plant foods and get your carbs from berries in season. Maybe you can try some starchy vegetables as potatoes, sweet potatoes, because you're burning more calories as an athlete. So maybe potatoes, as I said, the root vegetables and having some berries might be okay versus the plant toxin foods you might be reactive to. And you don't know that unless you remove them. So research study on here, you can look up. I'll put the links in the show notes body composition, calories, glucose. So all this was measured and you can look at what it found, but this was from uh, Dr. Ken Berry's site. And then you can look up the carnivore diet on drkilts.com to find out more information on the carnivore diet. If it is for you, right? So what is it? What is it? We went over this in previous video, nutrient density, what am I supposed to eat? It's great information on the carnivore diet, Dr. Kilt's website. So we went over this previous video, but I think it's just something as an athlete, I'm curious about what you should do. It's again, going back to matching your nutrition with your exercise and looking at how are you performing in your workouts? Do you need more nutrition? Are you eating enough calories? Are you doing high intensity interval training workout where you will be needing quick energy? Are you doing a long two hour plus workout, trail run, hike, that's anaerobic interval. So maybe you're doing hills on a bike ride that my heart rate will be up to 150, 160, and then come back down to my 120 this heart rate. So we want as athletes, take all this information from the keto carnivore world, doing a strict food elimination diet is the BBB and E challenge. But if you are exercising a lot, you might want to reduce your exercise during this time that you're doing a food elimination diet as a carnivore pro protocol, keto carnivore, carnivore, whatever you want to call it. 
taking out the plant foods and focusing on getting healthy fats, Dr. Bright talks about a 70% fat, 30% protein. An experiment with that and doing more strength training, less cardio. And if you are doing higher volume with higher heart rate workouts, that's where you can add in your carbs coming from the starchy vegetables, potatoes, maybe have them in your evening meal. During the workout, you might need something from S Fuels, S Fuels Race, S Fuels Plus, S Fuels Train for the lower heart rate workouts. And look at what we've talked about with S Fuels in previous videos. But I think you need to look at what is your goal to do if you're doing keto carnivore. If you're doing this as a food elimination diet, what's your why? What are your symptoms? Are you struggling with fat loss? Are you struggling with skin issues, gut issues, digestion? Are you trying to improve the, the aging process and work on your future use? I'm trying to focus on my brain health and making sure I, I don't have brain issues as I get older. So it's so individual. And that's why I do private coaching instead of group coaching even though I'm going to help with team keto on their course, but I think it's important to know that we're all a little different, but we all need to, our hormones are made the same way. We need fat to feed our hormones as we went over from what Judy has shared on her podcast and her carnivore cure summit. So just know that you might not be eating enough calories. You might not be timing your nutrition with your exercise and matching that intensity level but fasting too much, I think is more of the issue for a lot of us that we got into fasting and then we're not eating enough calories. So getting more fat and protein, not eating before bed too close, you know, just so much of it, but maybe you need a gut test. Maybe you need to do a GI map or a three day Genova diagnostic test to figure out what's going on. Maybe we need to measure your hormones, a Dutch test or a saliva test to measure cortisol over 24 hours, maybe you need to do less cold plunges and saunas and stressful things when you're already stressed. So we need to look at you as an individual, but as an athlete taking this BBB challenge, taking the strict carnivore diet as a food elimination healing diet, that it's something maybe temporarily, and then maybe you add in some things if you are feed if you're healed, if you feel better. So we want to look at your signs and symptoms and so much more, but sometimes it's, it's easier to let your body heal with food and use your own body's own innate intelligence to bring it back to its own homeostasis, to your own, to back to balance. But sometimes we need to kickstart it back in with the food elimination, but by identifying signs and symptoms of parasites, pathogen, bacteria, overgrowth, that you might need to do the food elimination diet, but then do a 60 day, 90 day protocol. If you have some parasites or some other issues that we need to eliminate those hidden internal sources of chronic stress. So I don't know if any of this helped you today, just going over what are anti-nutrients, what are plant toxins, what are some signs and symptoms that you might have inflammation in your body? We'll just look at if you have time, I can send you the nutritional therapy assessment form and give it to you for free just to give you an insight of what might be going on correlated to gut issues, liver congestion, poor digest enzymes. If you have high levels of H. pylori causing poor digestion of protein in your stomach because you're low HCL levels. If you just need to start with what you're eating, when you're eating, how you're eating, taking timeouts, manage your stress, prioritizing sleep, looking at your exercise time of day, what you're doing for your exercise. Are you moving throughout the day? So much more to go into what I call the holistic method coaching to coach the whole you from the inside out, work on nutrition first and looking at our exercise, but then do some functional lab testing when we're just struggling, can't figure out what's going on. When I'm working with people, we start with the nutrition and the lifestyle and nutrition exercise while we order labs, or maybe we don't need to order labs. So we figure that out. So let me know if you have questions, comments, and want me to dive into some other topics on upcoming episodes on the YouTube channel, the low carb athlete, and I will be posting more videos here and not as much on the audio version podcast for the summer. All right. So head to debbiepotts.net and send in your questions and what you want me to dive into next time.
Thanks. Have a great day.